Welcome to Raging Bullets, a DC Comics fan podcast, episode 642, our Justice League number 75 special. Welcome to Raging Bullets. I'm Sean Whalen, Dr. Norge, and I'm joined as always by my co-host Jim, the sensei of the whatnot, the Duke of you know, the salt of the strategery, the indestructible, bridge-defying, is worried about being written off the show doomsday style, and the elder statesman of the podcast, Segulin. How's it going, eh? Splat. Yeah, Jim, on this episode, what crack? Jim, on this episode, we're going to be talking about Justice League number 75. We previously announced we're going to talk about the Joker 2. We are delaying that a week. We really wanted to focus on Justice League number 75 and just chatting about Dark Crisis in general because we felt like this is kind of its own special piece that we're all celebrating right now. We are sponsored as always by DCB Service and InStockTrades.com. Mr. Seculin, what is going on over at DCBService.com? We've got the uh, DC Pride uh, 2022 uh, one shot, uh, as well, 40% off, as well as a DC Pride uh, Tim Drake special one shot, also uh, 40% off. Um, they're $5.99 and $3.59, uh, respectively. Thank you, DCDS. Over at InStockTrades.com and their new releases, they have Batman the Fear State Saga, $49.99 regularly. 42% off, only $28.99. And the excellent Batman the Detective miniseries in hardcover format, $24.99 regularly, 42% off, only $14.49. I want to thank DCB Service at InStockTrades.com for continuing to support our show. I do want to shout out once again real quickly, Superheroes, Orphans, and Origins, 125 years in comics. This exhibit is open from April 1st to August 22nd, 2022. Foundling Museum. Org.uk, and you can find that link in our show notes with a direct link to the actual news about the exhibit itself. And if you're able to be in the UK and you can check out that exhibit, I think it's terrific. Mr. Sagulin, what kind of a podcast are we? Raging Bullets is a spoiler podcast. We go in depth into plot lines, story twists, and whatnot of the books we're discussing on today's show. So if you haven't read them, you may want to come back later so you can better enjoy the show. Let's talk some comics. Jimmy, call the donut. All right, our main discussion this episode is Death of the Justice League, issue number 75. The writer is Joshua Williamson. Pencils are by Rafa Sandoval. The inks are by Jordi Tarragona. Colors by Matt Hermes. Her, Matt Herms, I'm sorry. Letters by Josh Reed. Cover by Daniel Sampier and Alejandro Sanchez. Variant covers by Alex Maleev. Dan Jurgens, Norm Ratman, Alex Sinclair, Mikkel Janin, Simone DeMeo, Tony Harris and Todd Nock, and Matt Herms, Associate Editor Chris Rosa, Editor Paul Kaminsky, Superman created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster by special arrangement with the Jerry Siegel family, and apologies for any name butchery because this was a read. I really, really enjoyed this one. This is one where it... I read this, it had to have been Monday night going into Tuesday, like it came out, and I was like, oh wait, I can read this now? Because DC's got this Tuesday release scheduled digitally now. Yeah. I read this in the middle of the night, Monday night, into Tuesday, I I guess it's technically Tuesday, but uh, I don't quite consider that Tuesday yet. (laughs) And could not put it down. It was really, it was not what I expected, which is strange considering the title of it. I am super excited for a Dark Crisis now because of this. Oh, big time, big time. And like you, it was funny, I picked this up on Tuesday. Because normally I wait until Wednesday or Thursday and whatnot and just hang back. But um, this week I you know, I was like, hey, they Tuesday releases, right? So I jumped on, you know. Amazology, and I'm like, hey, there it is. Boom. I grabbed it, bought it, read it right there, you know, Tuesday morning, you know, right before going into work. And then I reread it a second time right before going to work. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh man, this is awesome. And I'll tell you, it was funny, like you, like you said, wasn't exactly what I was expecting, but it really did help me get even more excited for, um, Dark Crisis. Yeah, you think back to just when we talked about Justice League Incarnate, that really like, oh my God, that got me ramped up. 
this continued the uh, the excitement for uh, Dark Crisis. I'm really looking forward to see how they deal with the crisis because they, they lost all the big guns. <laughs> they, they really do not have anyone. I'm like, how are they going to handle this? I'm like, dang, this is awesome. And, you know, it, it's funny because, one, I had that, but then, two, I immediately started looking at how can they bring them back? Who can they bring back? How can they do it? And I'm actually pretty comfortable with the state of them coming back eventually. There's only one character that I'm a little bit worried about not making it back after the Dark Crisis. Are you talking about Ali? Yep. He's yeah. the one I'm worried about. Yeah. You know, because you, you think about how all the others were killed and disappeared. He didn't go that way. He got crushed. And I'm like, and you heard the crack, and he died before the wiping. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm wondering if Ali's a goner. You know, and I don't want that, but, you know, I'm like, dang. And then, funny thing is, of all the people, he's one of the guys who actually, who also, who did die. You know, and he did dead. He was up in heaven dead, you know, and he came back, you know, because of, um, uh, um, you know, Green Lantern brought him back with the whole parallax and all that stuff. So it's... You know, I, I kind of neat seeing, you know, again, it's Ollie, you know, and just again, how they played it and how they laid it out. And I, I was very happy with it. I was very happy. Well, I was happy, but it was what there was stuff that part of me wishes things would have been a little different, but it, it's not like anything that says, oh, they, it would have been better. No, I just, you know, like the Ollie's death was cool. I really did enjoy that, you know, and part of me wanted more heroes to have that kind of like that. That's what I was picturing in my head. You know, when I was my imagining on this was going to be just this bloodbath and going down, fighting and swinging. But as I just said, 10 minutes ago, um, the reason that they didn't do, they didn't do, they did more of the wipey kind of ending is why I'm thinking it'll be easier to bring them back versus with Ali. It's not going to be easy bringing him back. So on one hand, I wanted, I, I was thinking that was going to be the case. But then on the other hand, when I saw what I actually got, I was kind of like, I was a little bit more happier. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I was more, I don't, I was never worried about this. I was expecting exactly what you were saying, where it was going to be each one having an individual moment where they died. I think what I found refreshing is, I think when you walk in with too much expectation, like you knew the title was going to be Death of the Justice League, you knew they were really doing it. And they always said there was going to be one survivor. And when I saw the cover, you know, I think I had mentioned Black back at the time that I thought, I'm like, well, Black Adam's got to be the one, right? Because he's got a series coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, but I think you had made the accurate point of, well, does that really mean anything? Because, truthfully, a lot of these people have series. <laughs> Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what this looks like for all of them. I will, as I'm looking through the digital issue, there's a couple things I want to talk about. Actually, one thing I want to talk about before we dive heavily into this. Did you know Jurassic League was coming? Like, you know, I saw I saw clips, of, I saw things on it. I didn't know what it was or any of that stuff. So that looks interesting. <laughs> I mean, this is one of those things that, like, I definitely, you know, I, I would pre-order and I, I did. But you, you know, you forget like the things were coming. I saw that page and I'm like, oh, this, like, them as dinosaurs. I I don't know what I was expecting, like, when they were paring back the line and stuff like that, but I was figuring we weren't going to get wacky stuff like this anymore. And we seem to be getting more of it now than ever before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm strangely interested in that. I hope it's good. It, it certainly... It made me take a look, which is why I'm even mentioning it. But on the digital version, when you flip through, you get the, the third page, well, second page technically, is the cover without that Death of the Justice League on it. Yeah. And is that a sharp looking cover or what? Dude, yeah. You know, and I'll tell you, man, um, anytime I see the big blue in pain or like, ah, uh, you know, it does make you go, oh boy. <laughs> you know? If he's hurting, you know it's something severe, you know, and they did a great job with this cover. And, of course, you know, you know, I, you know, it's, I, you know, it, it, it was funny because I'm looking at when I was looking at the cover, I was looking for any kind of like if there was any like Easter egg or any clue hidden. And, you know, it's not really, you know, I'm like, it's kind of neat, you know, just how they didn't do like have one person like have Black Adam in a position 
in a different position or not on the cover or do something like that to throw you off until you actually see who the, who the final survivor is. The nice part about this is when you flip the page for the Earth Zero, the skies above Kondok, and you see what ha- you know Black Adam being pulled out of where he was at. I really liked that this issue kicked off with, you don't need to have read anything. Like, we're going to give you everything you need. If you read what we talked about last week, Justice League Incarnate, this does feel like it comes right afterwards. But there isn't like, you need to know a whole bunch of stuff. They fill you in with everything you need. This was really smart because this is an issue that's going to make some noise, I hope. In that process, you want to make it accessible to people. So we get to see each of our heroes pulled out of their respective stories where they're at. I did like that we got through everybody. We've got, you know, Batman. We've got Wonder Woman. We've got Jon Stewart. We've got Hawkgirl. We've got Superman. Zatanna, which was a surprise for me. Aquaman. Martian Manhunter. And then Black Canary. Ollie jumped on board. Hitched a ride. It's going to wind up... It's one of the reasons why I thought it was like, wow, his unique death, too, is yeah. kind of fitting for the fact that he really is a tag-along on this. He was not supposed to be pulled. And you got to question why Naomi wasn't pulled and he wasn't pulled. Uh, you know, so... And they explain that, you know, as far as they could only pull a certain number of heroes, but they left Ali out of the equation, which was interesting. Yeah, I loved this sequence. Well. Wow. Tana was on stage, so I'm immediately thinking, how neat would have been in the audience if suddenly she disappears, you're like, oh, that's awesome, I'm thinking it's all part of the act, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and then she, when's she coming back, you know, what's, what's going on here, well, uh-huh, you know, and then even, but to your point about Ollie, how awesome is Ollie, you yep. know, Black Canary, he's taking off, and what does he do, without even thinking, he jumps right in, he's like, I'm going with you. Come on, everything we've been through, where you go, I go. And I loved, loved just that, you know, that Oliver Queen, you know, dedication and loyalty. It's a, such a cool character. And then, especially when she calls him Oliver right in front of Black Adam, he's like, you know our names, right? <laughs> you know, he's like, code name, come on, you know. They get little funny moments, you know, that kind of has me chuckling with Oliver. Wait, this was- I, I will say something else. I don't, was he questioning that or was he questioning the fact that she was calling him Oliver, not Ollie. Yeah. Because that's also a weird thing. She doesn't usually call him Oliver unless there's an issue. Yeah. And I, she's a little miffed that he was there. You know, the danger of him tagging along, that type of thing. Like, it was almost like scolding him. Ah, so okay. So there's that component to it as well. I don't know. I don't know that he's worried so much about Black Adam knowing the identity, although I don't know. It's it's one of those pieces. I took it, at least I, this is my interpretation of it, whether you agree with it or not, and that's fair. I took it as she was scolding him, calling him Oliver instead of, because right before in the panel before, she's calling him Ollie. Yeah. And then when they show up there, it's kind of like this, what are you, like, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> No, I 100 percent see that. Yeah, you know, and again, it is not even. It, I, I agree with her. Not the smartest thing to jump on mid transport. Mm-hmm. They could have had a merging kind of situation where the transport accidentally, you know, swapped DNA or did something like that. That really would have messed things up. But well, I watched Star Trek: The Motion Picture recently. They they've they had this director's cut, but it was I guess a lower resolution, and they've just recently re released it in you know to the like 4K you know like upper standards. And so I watched it again. It's been a long time since I watched the V'ger story, right? They have some issues with the transporter on that yeah. one, and so it's it was timely, just in the sense that I just watched that and. I've always been fascinated by the idea of the Star Trek transporters and just being able to teleport from place to place. And I used to watch a show called The Tomorrow People, uh, you know, you from the from yeah. the BBC, or I think it was BBC, Thames Television. Um, I don't know what the association that with the BBC, but it was a British show, and I loved The Tomorrow People. And they they had the teleporting. They called it jaunting that they would teleport from place to place. And I always I always was fascinated by teleporting, and I always thought it'd be like a cool power to have and the ability to do that. But then you think about the fact: what if you teleport to the wrong spot? What if you teleport in a wall? Because I was like Nightcrawler's powers too in the X Men, and I think this was one of those things where she's right. That's like really dangerous. <laughs> 
But that's Ollie, right? His impulsive yeah. nature. I will say this. I'm hoping at some point there is a, maybe through this process, there's an opportunity to relaunch a Green Arrow series of some sort. Because I love reading the Green Arrow character, whether it's a whether it's a new Green Arrow or it's Ollie or whatever they're going to do. I really enjoy the character. I'd really like it to be, an, personally, I would love to another Ollie series. Just because I love the character. And I think this last time around, they had some really good runs. I think the biggest problem with the last series was not the quality of the writing and art teams that were on board. It was the disjointed fact that they kept changing them up. And nobody got a chance to do like what they've done with The Flash with Joshua Williamson, where you got a chance for a nice long run. I think Ali would have benefited from, like, like let's use Jeff Lemire as an example. I really enjoyed his run on the most recent Green Arrow. And I think you were a fan of that as well, if I'm right. Oh, big time. It wouldn't have been nice if he had a nice lengthy run with Oliver Queen and a chance. And I would say that if some of the, he's not the only one, there was a number of creative teams that I really enjoyed along the way that it would have been nice for them to have multiple arcs with the character where it would have built somewhere. And he's a character who I just, uh, this fan expos this weekend in Cleveland, Mike Grell is going to be one of the people there. I specifically bought Longbow Hunters, Again, another version of it to have each issue signed by Mike Grell. So that way I can frame them. I'm a huge fan of Mike Grell because of that great run. Green Arrow has enjoyed some really cool runs. And it's a character that I I would love to see revitalized again. I loved Robin Hood. Is it? Did you like Robin Hood? Was that like a oh, character? God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was always into that. Yeah. You know, and, it, and, you know, Green Arrow was a character that I didn't really, I didn't read you know, a lot as a kid, but I always liked the concept of it, you know, and as you said, Robin Hood was always a big thing, you know. I'm a Dungeons and Dragons kid, so yeah, 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 archers yeah. and elves and whatnot, you know, you know, we, you know, I, you know, played multiple characters, that, you know, like, you know, within that style. We always had, you know, the, you know, the, the look, you know, had very similar looks because my brother Dave and I, and we played uh, characters who are characters were twi- twin brothers. Did you play D and D? Yeah, I never knew this. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. jealous because uh, yeah. I I played it like twice in my life. Like, and both times were at John Carroll University. It was an alumni weekend. There was a kid there that I met who was like a big Dungeons and Dag- Dragons player, and said, "Would you like to play?" It's the first time I ever played it. I loved it. I love yeah. like RP like. As a gamer, one of my favorite genres is RPGs because I love story. Obviously, as a comic fan for serialized story, long form storytelling is great. I never knew that you played. I don't know that we've ever talked about this, but D and D. That's I'm, I'm fascinated by this. So you you grew up playing some D and D with your brother, with it. brother Bill, and yeah, you know, well, my, my other brother Angelo. Um, he they were they were the DMs. They used to rotate times. When one would be the DM, then the other one would be the DM. Dave and I were in there. Mary actually even played. My sister Mary played. You know, he had Bill had other friends from high school that you know would you know join in different things. And we did not. We didn't just do D and D. We did villains and vigilantes. Uh, there was a game called Top Secret that was a spy espionage one. Let's see. Well, oh, we had a Viet, there was a Vietnam one. I can't remember what. Why have we never Vietnam. done? Why have we never talked about this or done any of this stuff? I, I think it's because <laughs> no, because I, I find it first of all. Honest, I thought I, I thought I would I love to play. I've said this before because yeah, my brother Bill still plays. I'd love Bill to play. Th- I'd love to play this now. Like, why yeah. isn't Brother Bill like started a game and like I would I would love to sit down and play with both of you and this type of thing. This is fascinating to me because I have had very little opportunity to play. And there, wait, here's the thing: there have been multiple variations of a DC role playing game. I mean, there's you know there's so many opportunities to play like cool role playing. But D and D has always been something I've been fascinated by. Okay, well, here, let's, we'll do a test. Uh, Brother Bill, I'm pretty sure you are listening, mm-hmm. or you will eventually be, because he does listen to all the show, or Angelo, if you're listening. You know, let me know when you hear this episode and whether we can figure out some, some type of uh, D&D thing. And we'll follow up with everybody when, you know, when one of them hears this and we see if we can get this going. I would be, I would love to, I, I genuinely mean that. I would love to play. 
because um, as long as they can accept the fact I'm a, I'm relatively a newbie. I've played twice in my life, but I loved the experience. So I would definitely, I just had nobody to play with. You know, as far as that goes, it makes me sound very sad. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have enough geeks in your life. I did not. It's, it's, it's a strange sort of thing. But that's kind of common, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's kind of, you're either lucky enough to have a group or you didn't. But yeah. but you're right. He's that kind of character that fits into, I play Final Fantasy fourteen online, and my character's an archer. Because of the fact that I love characters like Green Arrow. I mean, it, it really is a Green Arrow piece in there. And I love the whole Archer kind of experience. So he's a character. I've Green Arrow's been one since my childhood that was a character that fascinated me. I knew him more. I had the Mego character of Green Arrow before I knew who he was. That was my first experience with him because it was before he was on Super Friends. Oh, okay. Well, you think you look at him, you can pretty much tell what's going on. And that was the neat thing about, you know, yeah. just the whole Robin Hood look and the bow. And you can tell the trick arrows and stuff like that. And, you know, in on the Avenger side and the Marvel side with Hawkeye, you know, which came first, I don't care. They both were really cool, different characters. And I liked Hawkeye because I read a lot of the West Coast Avengers, you know, when they did that spinoff, you know. That and, was a great, wait, yeah. here's the thing. You want to talk about a great comic? Yeah. West Coast Avengers, especially when it kicked off, that was a yes. great, great run. <laughs> yeah, I read that. So, and again, I read it part of it because I did like Hawkeye. I do yeah. like that that Archer character kind of thing. But it was funny because I didn't really read Green uh, Green Arrow, you know. And but every time I pick up a Green Arrow series and I read it, I'm like, this is awesome. He's a great character. I love yeah. the TV show. And you know, you know me and the team dynamic. I love Arrow family and. You know, you look at what they've got going on now with, you know, if, if they were bringing back Ollie and Black Canary, you bring in Roy, who's back from the dead. Ollie would be back from the dead. You know, you've got Roy's uh, daughter who's now back from the dead. There's so many different kind of s- cool stories they could do with the Arrow family after Dark Crisis. You know, after we bring back Ollie and Black Canary, we can have a really neat run. You know, with the right creative team, create, you know, give them a nice, you know, meaty run, give them some time to really dig into it and just all the different stuff that's happened in this family, in this, you know, you know, within this unit, what they could do with it. It'd be awesome. I couldn't agree more. I think, I think it's a character that um, is primed for a really good book with the right creative team who understands the character. I, I, I'm a big fan. Yeah. I like them playing off with Black Adam. Boy, yes. was Black Adam a great addition to Justice League? And the Bendis run was a great Justice League run. I really liked the team. I liked the, the fact that you had like the some of the heavy hitters, you know, the people that you would expect, but you have mixed in with some unique characters that you don't normally expect. You mentioned of West Coast Avengers, right? What worked about Avengers in general, what's always worked about Avengers has been you have a certain amount of your top tier characters, and then you have some interesting characters that kind of Add some color to it, flesh it out, and make it yeah. interesting. Unique characters. That's what make that run great. This story is chock full of interesting characters because you've got the te- It's almost like a classic team up of the Justice League and the Justice League Incarnate. And it was a time where I was ready to see these characters all back together. Like John Stewart being plopped back in at this point was a really good time to bring him in. And Martian Manhunter's kind of being brought back in a little bit out of nowhere. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I loved when they had this initial roll call. You know, they've got Justice League on top, yeah. Justice League Incarnate on bottom. And just that, just that initial meeting, they're all gathering and they're all just figuring out what's going on here. I, it's funny. I want to be Captain Carrot so bad just so Superman will call me my old friend. You know, I love with yeah. little moments like that. Superman walking up to you and saying, you know, my old friend, rest, you know, please rest. Whatever's here. We need to help. We will help you. And I just, I'm you know, like, yeah, Superman. And then Dino Comp going up to Batman, your father. He, knowing, he, he told Bruce everything that Thomas did to save them and how Thomas kind of had that redemption moment, you know, the redemption of Thomas Wayne. I'm like, oh, man. Again, I would have loved to have seen. But that's just, not his dad, which is the crazy part about all this. Right. Because of. The timey-wimey nonsense. It's not really his dad. 
But it is, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Just like there's other versions of Bruce. Yep. That's where like the DC universe gets like super heady. It's I, I was listening to a Doctor Who audio recently where there was um it's it's called Doctor Who Unbound, a Doctor of War. And the idea behind it is it takes a classic Doctor Who story where the Doctor is supposed to kill the Daleks. And it plays off of a variation of what could have happened. And it's like what if in the Doctor Who universe, if that makes sense, the what if classic Marvel what if series. DC plays with that all the time with the multiverse. Like they've, you know, kind of embraced what if long before it was like chic, (laughs) shall we say. And I love that aspect of this. Uh, It's... Joshua Williamson's done a really good job in this of embracing classic continuity because I love that like Superman is referencing Captain Carrot as his friend. It gives a sense of longevity, gives a sense of time. These are characters that would know each other because of the rich history of the DC universe. And it kicks back into very quickly, there's not enough time for everything we want to do here. And I think that was really important in this issue because it moved quick. I mean, you did not have a time as a reader to like sit down and take a breath because we jump into, hey, we got something like he's his his costumes ripped. Um, he's just been through the ringer. He's recognizing I should have come to you sooner. You know what yeah. what happened with Barry Allen and and the whole situation. I should have come to you beforehand. I, I thought we owned this. I thought we had it. And that's going to be a theme that's really important to this because they all should be thinking this way right now. We don't have enough people here. This is not the right numbers. This is not the right force to handle what we're dealing with here. What he's laying out for them, you know, he pulled people in and he was right to say, I yes. wish I could pull in more. Yes. Uh, and so what Calvin's laying out is 100% accurate. I really liked this build because he was already laying out, this is this is serious. And what happened with Darkseid and the fact that we've got this evil army, like, this is bad. This is like a different next level bad. This is something you can't be prepared for. It's something we've never encountered before. They're already coming right now to take over the bleed, yep. you know, between the worlds. It's like they're they're able to be everywhere. We don't have time. That was something that was, it added this sense of intensity to the whole thing. Um, this is a not at all what I expected, which was which seems kind of nuts considering it's the death of the Justice League. But I think the presentation of it is something where I love that you can throw out a title like that and yet still still tell the story in a way that feels unique and interesting and full of surprise. You think about it. When Death of Superman was out, it was called Death of Superman. They flat out said, yes, he is dying. Yeah. yeah. They, laid it out and it was still an epic story just because of the story told death of the justice league we know they're dying you know they told us one's going to survive you know and we're still you know still got a great story and i love just the concept because again what you said with you know uh, president superman's like hey i messed up i should have called in sooner we should have got more people and i like when they're talking about fighting the great darkness you know and dr multiverse is like you don't just fight the great darkness it's a forever presence, not good nor evil. The most you can hope for is that it's always at rest. And I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, yes, you can never truly defeat this thing. And I love that concept and that idea of just how massive it is. And especially love the fact that I see Bruce, of all people, saying, hey, we need to get to back to Earth Zero and let the Titans know. Bruce Wayne, the loner, is saying, let's call for backup. I'm like, yes, even Bruce recognizes how big of a deal this is. Well, what Bruce is recognizing is if we fall, they need to know what's going on. Yep. I yeah. love that. I love seeing that. Because, yeah. again, Cause it, that is, it does show. It's a strategic move, too. So yes. we, we talk about Bruce being the strategist. It's appropriate that he would sit there and go, listen, we need to let them know what's coming. And he's right on this piece. And it's not able to happen. Ali's kind of the idealist. 
And we know that about Ali. So his reaction is, you worry too much, we're the Justice League, stopping a crisis is our whole thing. And that is, there is kind of that hoorah rally cry of, as a team, we know what we're capable of and what we can do. They've never encountered anything no. like this. And setting that stage, this is an example of a writer being able to build anticipation. We know what's coming, but yet he's setting a stage of why this is different, why this is unique. I loved the layout and like the pacing of this was really phenomenal. Yep. Yeah. And again, you know, with that sequence with me out, I took it as Ollie, you know, as that, that bravado, but not, not like a, a stupid bravado. You're like, Oh, come on. Tell me you're not looking at the thing. No, I took it more as a, you know, pump, you know, confidence pump up, get the team ready for battle. Yeah. 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 That, you know, and, you know, that, that, the, the coach's pep talk, win one for the Gipper kind of mindset. And then I love it going into immediately after that, what Superman do? Superman calls out, President Superman will, you know, will follow your lead. So right there, Soup recognizes we've got two Supermen here. One has experience, more experience dealing with this. Yep. He takes the lead. He, you know, we follow his lead. That way there's no question whatsoever as to what you know what direction we're going with this i love that series and then of course seeing diana draw the sword get the shield ready you want to fight let's dance you know like yeah there's a confidence in what superman did i'm glad you're pointing that out because i really liked how clark handled that because you can ego wise sit there and go i'm the leader here i'm in check and superman it's funny we've we had the reluctant leader discussion let's take that out of it for a second there I think though, where there's a confidence in somebody being a symbol, being being that leader, whatever you want to call him in that moment, Superman being the one to recognize, if I say this, everyone's going to kind of fall in line and look towards President Superman and follow him. Somebody needed to speak up and do that so that way there was some quick or because there needed to be quick or because it was breaching it. So. Yeah. We need some quick organization. We need to move forward, and, and everyone needs to do what they need to do. I really, really like that. You mentioned something about Ali earlier, and I think that's a key point of this. Nobody looked bad in this. Like, things happen. We, we saw heroes fall. We saw situations happen, fights happen. Everyone looked good. And you go down, you go down looking good, even with how it happened. And there's something, like, big about it. And how it yeah. feels, and this felt big, big time. You know, and again, I loved you know just how you know even when you know, they're teleported to the front line, you know, and just the massive scope of what is this place? The ruins of a dead multiverse. I'm like, oh, it's not just the ruins of a dead Earth. This is the ruins of a multiverse. Well, like, it's, oh, no. it's our multiverse. It's the one yeah. from Crisis. Yeah. So they're going all the way back from the beginning. One of the things I love about this is he's like, we're going to play with the entire sandbox in this. And I, what we're building towards is something huge. Christ on infant. Well, here's the thing we know. Christ on infant. Not only that it happened, there's things we don't know about how that played out. And we're going to learn more. I love when a writer does that. This is where continuity is really, really cool. Where he's like, you think you knew the whole story. There's a whole epilogue you never knew about that well, I'm going to tell you about right now. <laughs> and now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> Wait, we got the beginnings of the rest of the story here because the rest of the story's coming. And that's what yep. we're heading towards this summer. You talk about dangling a carrot. People are like, I'm a fan of classic DC. If they're not looking at this and going, hey, this is maybe my jump on to take a look at some things, this is a very accessible issue to give to somebody who's been a classic DC reader and say, listen, you read Christ on Infinite Earths? You may want to check this out right now because in many ways, they're, they've just now connected the dots. Yes. And it's an important thing for DC to do right now because a criticism, whether you agree with it or not, that's out there is that there's, there's a group of longtime fans that feel disenfranchised by the fact that some of the tropes that have been very important to them have not been a part of the DC universe. Whether you agree or disagree, that's irrelevant. We're not debating that right now. There is a group of people that feel that. So if you take a look at something like this and go, all right, we got a story now that for the fans that have been reading all along, that's us, 
you're going to dig this. But we've also got an issue here that's accessible for those fans, the lapsed fans. This is a this is a direct reference to Crisis on Infinite Earths, and it's here. Pariah is leading that charge. This was smart. Yeah. This is because that balance is tricky to find. I'm hoping I'm hoping the right people read it, meaning that people give it a chance that have walked away. Give this a read and, and see if it's maybe a little bit of a hook to follow where things are going with Dark Crisis. There's a, there's a there, I think there's a doorway here. If people give it a shot, I'm going to be very curious to see what this event looks like and what I'm hoping it generates some noise. I am because yeah. I, it's out of the starting gate. This is an interesting issue. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of neat because they could have called this dark crisis issue zero. Yep. They very easily could have done that. And just like the justice league incarnate, it could have been, you know, the, the, the pre dark crisis or so, you know, series like that, but they kept it as, Justice Incarnate, and it's following that storyline. This is following the Justice League storyline. This was Justice League 75. They did it, keeping it within their own individual continuities, even though they are 100% the lead-in stories. You and know? I think and they did if you're, I think they did the right thing, by the yes, way. Yes, but, but, but I'm agreeing with what you're saying. They could have gone that route, which I think at this point is kind of tired. Like, I think what they did is smarter. Like, let's, um, let's just be on it with Justice League 75 is Death of Justice League. You haven't been reading it? You're going to want to look at this issue. They did a good job of dangling a different kind of carrot with this. And, and honoring, of course, the history of Superman with the issue number as well. That was It was a good move to do it this way. It was a little bit different and honoring a little bit of DC history in the process, which I think is a smart move. Oh, big time. Yeah, I'm absolutely loving how they did it this way. You know, so I make sure that's clear. And, you know, the thing I also loved is, you know, going back to uh, Pariah, you know, because, again, he was that great character from the very original Crisis, you know, and I still were and they didn't change the, they didn't change who that guy was and put him in this. He's got a little bit of the great darkness, well, a lot of the great darkness corrupting him. Mm-hmm. But also part of it does still feed into what he was before. He was the guy cursed to go from one catastrophe to another because he ultimately caused the initial, you know, the initial, you know, problem with his anti, you know, with his, uh, with his chamber. So, you know, I love the fact that he's in this and that he's been corrupted by the great darkness and how he is like their initial fight. The, you know, I love how the justice league never really fights the great darkness in the death of the justice league. They deal with all his minions. They deal with you know, Pariah and all the army, the dark army that Pariah has access to. But the one scene I absolutely love, again, another one, another Superman moment I love is when even though all this death and destruction is going on, what's Clark? What's the first thing Clark tries to do? It's not combat. It's, you know, hey, I know what it's like to lose a world. The great darkness, it's using you. We want to help. Please. And I, I just, again, those Superman moments when, you know, you got Superman sitting there, you know, just being that, that Kansas farm boy saying, let us help you. And just, again, great moment where you kind of see maybe going to get into Pariah where he's like, help. Lies. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Great. You know, again, really, you know, as I'm reading through this thing, I was absolutely loving just how. You know, you've got these great hero moments. You've got then you've got this physical, you know, action sequence and just that first image of the dark army. I was like, oh, that is outstanding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's such a unique link of history mixed with new concepts. Um, The dark army piece, like his dark army, well, sort of his dark army. Because we know there's something else. And boy, did they pull everybody. We've got Necron. We've got Darkseid. We've got Neron. We've got um, Ares. It was Ares. And yeah, it's, it's, yeah, but this idea that they haven't been, they've been corrupted, but it like the power is not fully taken yet. When that power fully, t- like the Justice League's having trouble with them at this level. And they're only going to get stronger the more that this great darkness overtakes them. That's insane. Talk about a great way to set up a big bad for a 
event that's coming, this is like the top tier of who's who in the DC universe. And they're struggling with this group. Oh, and they time. lose. They lose. I mean, in, in the end, they do lose the fight. And I, but I, I love how as they're going into battle, as we get these cool moments, you've got you know Batman laying out the game, the, the battle plan. Yep. You know, because he's pulls Black Canary away. Hey, let them deal with the army. We got to shut down that machine. He recognizes that machine. We got to take it down. These guys are just keeping us from it. Yeah. You know, and then as the team is breaking down, and you can see they're not just doing one on one; they're double teaming each of these villains. You know, and each one of them are taking their own. You know, you've got you know um, both of the Aqua on um, on Doomsday. We've got uh, Thunder and Martian Manhunter and Eclipso. We've got uh, Captain Garrett and Zatanna on Upside Down Man. It's like multiple people going at it. You know, Aerie, you know, Wonder Woman and, you know, Dr. Multiverse fighting Aries. And I love just that sequence of the two Superman, of course, on Dark Side. But, and again, I love how Wonder Woman was laying out like, hey, these are shadows of them. If this was the real God of War, this fight would be very different. She recognizes that. And Clark's like, hey, this is just a brute version of Dark Side. You know, and I love how they're all identifying that. And it gets to that really cool moment where, again, Dark Side kind of starts fighting through it. You know, and he there's a little bit of moment there where he's like, the Justice League can only win, you can only chance of survival is to uh, Darkness takes back over. I'm like, oh, that's so close. And I tell you, I so want dark side to fight the great darkness and you know and, and be the hero of the story i'm wondering i really do think we're going to get a moment where dark side is going to be the hero of the dark crisis you know which i, I think would be awesome well that's just it it's you know, dark side is somebody who yes is out for dark side and he has to realize that this this defeat of his is not going to help him in any way shape or form I love that this led into a situation where you see like this bright shining light in Jon Stewart yeah. bringing the God Storm, coming in confidently because that's what Green Lanterns do, right? They rally charge. And you see him coming in with the who's who of you know heroes that are constructs. It does feel really, really good what's happening here. But they have an answer to everything. Yep. Sure, he's winning. Sure, he's making headway. Until the spirit of darkness shows up, and boy, did they play that well, dude! I'll tell you, you know, evil, you know, sp- e- corrupted uh, Spectre is not good. <laughs> we got a problem here. Yep. And I love how when he shows up and he's like, "Die, brightest night," but it's not night as a, it's the night as in K N I G H T. You know, I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, this leads to the moment that you're talking about with Ali having, you know, some key pivotal moments there where we see him rallying and and having, you know, moments where he's taking advantage of the situation, seeing arrows flying through where he distracts Pariah and it's not enough. Doomsday comes and just crushes him. And that crack, you just knew that that was not going to be a thing. I, I, my heart sank and yeah. it, it did the moment did emotionally what it was supposed to do because it was Ali, because Ali came along and he was a tag along that was there to take care of his love. It was wow. I thought it was very well written what happened with him. Well, that was an epic death scene. I absolutely loved that moment. Again, I feel bad because. Of all of them, he's the one I really think is going to have a hard time for them to bring back at the end of this because he died, died. But, you know, that is a hero death to you. And I love how Canary really reacted with the, you know, with the epic uh, Canary cry when she's yelling no. You know that had some epic power behind it. And just those final moments, you know, why did you follow me? I always follow you, pretty bird. Nezzy dies. I'm like, oh man, no, no. Do you think the yeah. rest didn't die? Die? What? Do you think the rest didn't die? Die? Okay. That's interesting. We'll have to talk. Actually, yeah. why don't why don't we wait and talk about that? But it's interesting that you're talking about because I think that's let's save it for when we get to that moment. 
But I think that's a question. Let's let that linger for a second. Because I think we need to talk about what actually happened to the others and what we feel about that. Because it really is pivotal as far as what we feel Ali's chances are for the future. Or or what Ali needs to look like. Because that's what you're setting the stage for. Yes. Ali somehow may need to look different. Well, because you think about it. Um, the, you know, that, cause the very next page, the, the Trinity is swarming in on Pariah and he uses his power to basically erase them from existence. Now, the way I look at it is if you're erased that way, you can always be unerased. But if you die, die, if they unerase you and take you back to the moment, you still have a shattered spine and a crushed skull. So that's how I look at it. You know, hmm. same thing goes with John Stewart when you know the uh, you know when the the evil specter hits him with his energy and he kind of like you know disappears. I didn't take it as well. I, I took it as a, that's something that could be reversed when the darkness is uh, pushed back. But Ali, I don't know if they can bring that back. I'm wondering if when the you know when the story is said and done, when Dark Crisis is said and done, and things are reversed. They see Oliver Queen still dead, and they're like, "Oh no, you know." And I, that's you know, for me, I'm one. I don't want that. Just for the record, I don't want that. But part of me is wondering if that's going to be a little swerve, you know, to tug, tug at the old heartstrings that it's not going to be a clean victory for the heroes. Do you think? Wow, it's good because we're making a lot of assumptions here that yeah. the heroes are actually going to return um, as a part of this story, and I. I don't. It's it's going to be an interesting. It's going to be interesting to see where they're going with this, and what it actually means. Like, are we going to get the heroes back at the end of Dark Crisis? How long is Dark Crisis? Like, we don't, do we know what you had announced actually in our last episode? Did they announce how many issues the series was? Yes, yes, they did. How many? It is seven issues. Okay, and yeah. with, with 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 some known tie-ins. There's there's some content coming. Um, yeah, it's seven issues. The Young Justice Dark Crisis tie-in is six issues. Those are the only. That's the only tie-in I know of right now. I'm so, sure there's going to be more along the way. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm while well, making an assumption there. Yes, but so that means if it's monthly, that's seven months. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you. I, I, th- I'm, I'm confident that the tri- the Trinity is coming back. Okay. You know, and part of the reason I'm confident on that is they did just kill off Wonder Woman. And they brought her back. I can't see them killing her off again, even though they're building up the other Amazon's legacy and the other the other characters. They very easily could continue on with those stories, and we get some great stories. But I can't see you know the editorial the editors of DC saying let's kill her off, bring her back just to kill her off. Could Wonder Woman be DC South Park? Could she be Kenny? <laughs> could she be Kenny? Oh my mm-hmm. God! You killed Wonder Woman. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think that's going to happen. But now here's the one thing I do wonder about Superman, because, you know, you think back to the the legend that's going on, you know, with um, when John went into the future, he found out that his father disappears when he went goes to World War and never returns. Clark was taken from orbit of War War, not not from Earth. So Clark could also be one of those characters who doesn't come back. You know, I could see Superman doing the sacrifice, you know, to save everybody because he's that cool, you know. And, you know, Bat, again, I think, you know, he's been dead and gone and broken and all that. I don't think they're going to remove him from the story. So I think they're going to bring – I'm I'm confident all three of them are coming back. But of the Trinity, I would say Superman would be the one they wouldn't bring back. In fairness, they've removed him all from the story right now. Yeah. So in reality, they've done it. So now it's a matter of, do they bring him back and what does it look like? Could this, I guess, here's what I'm looking at, I guess, looking at Ali as an example. Is this, not only for Ali, is this a way that we get Alfred back? Is this a way that, you know, are there going to be story beats in here that allow characters to come back that have passed? Oh, dude, that would be awesome. If if that's how we bring back Alfred, Mm -hmm. I would 100% be all for it, you know? Because we've got yeah. a dead multiverse here. What is the res- – like, where is this story going? That's something that 
you know, is this is this really leading to DC taking a bold move of focusing on a new generation? I'm, and let me be clear: I'm not when I say bold move. Sometimes it seems like that's what you want or anything like that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that's a risky move. That kind of bold. Uh, it wouldn't be my preference. Um, not that I love all those characters, but I, I wasn't a big I, fan of the idea of, and I could be alone on this, but I wasn't a big fan of the idea of the new generation being our main... I, I'm fine with it for this story, and I'm fine with it for a while as far as it going on that end, but I, I'm always a big fan of... We talked about this with I Am Batman, right? Where yeah. I love Jace, and I love him as Batman. But I don't want to lose Bruce to have Jace as Batman. I I liked when Jace left Gotham because it set up the scenario where, well, Bruce can still run Gotham. And Jace can tell his own story. And there's a reason for this new kind of Batman operating a new kind of way in a new location. I'm always a fan of that. I'm not saying I'm not a fan of what they're doing in this storyline. Excited? And nervous at the same time of what are they going to try to do with this? And where is it going to try to go? And that's what this story should have at this point, though, right? We should be worried for the heroes. And even if we're confident that they're going to come back because of who they are, I'm still nervous for them. And that's the brilliant thing that DC is doing right now. Yeah. That they are laying the ground. Because I'm saying, I'm thinking all three of them are going to come back. But they've laid a solid foundation yeah. not to bring any of them back. Sure. You know, Wonder Woman, the and the stories going on with the Amazons right now are outstanding. Yep. John as Superman is 100% outstanding. Jace as Batman, uh, Dick Grayson, night, you know, handling uh, Gotham, taking over the Gotham Reigns as Nightwing. 100% I've got no problem with that. You throw in the little monster, you know, to being, you know, Gotham's new, uh, you know, guardian. Oh my god, they could do so much cool stuff, you know, with that not bringing Bruce back. So they 100% could not bring back them, and I'd still get great stories. So now, what if, if I was personally so, to say my Jim, personal preference? What if this sticks, though? I, I, like That's what I'm – yeah. So what, if it sticks – well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go with your personal preference first. I, I'm, my personal I, preference would be to bring them back. Okay. I want the Trinity back because I love Clark's stories. Yeah. I love Bruce's stories, and I love Diana's stories. Yeah. Now, the other characters are wonderful characters, and I love their stories, but the I love these people, yeah. and I want to continue seeing their stories. You know, I want to see, you know, Bruce come back. I want to see Alfred come back, and just that moment of where Bruce, you know, because he'll initially see Alfred not realize, is this my Alfred? And then that moment when he realizes, this is my Alfred. He realizes, this is the real Alfred. You know, I, I'm so looking forward to that. And just like the reunion between Lois and Clark, because he's been off world for how long now? When he comes back, the reunion of those two and then the reunion of, you know, of him and John, you know, because John's like thinking, my dad is gone now and because of what he saw in the future. But when Clark comes back, you know, just that moment between those two and then any of the cool moments with Diana. She's, I absolutely love her as a person, as a character, you know, whether she's Wonder Woman or she's being just Diana. I absolutely love these three characters. So I want them around because I enjoy them. Now, if DC's like, hey, we're going to go with the other up, I'm still 100% all in because they did such a great job laying the foundation of the other characters. You know, the, of the next generation, this isn't just something suddenly they're throwing at us. They've laid some solid uh, groundwork on it. You know, so I'm all in on that. Yeah, I agree with you. It's uh, it's an interesting sort of piece. Uh, I'm I, I won't pretend like you know if Batman doesn't if Bruce doesn't come back, I riot. It's uh, I will read the story. Um, then it's up to the authors to make a compelling enough story that you convince me as a reader that that's really what I want. I don't know where they're going with this. Um, it's the Shazam sequence is what I'm looking at right now. And I was, when he started, even when he started doing it, I'm like, oh, okay, this is how dude, Here it comes. this is how dude survives narrowly black Adam, who we know is a powerhouse narrowly survives this. That part was really interesting. Not only does he barely survive, he gets messed up. Oh, I'm yeah. like, Oh, Oh man. That, for me, I loved, again, the sequences, because you're seeing Pariah just, just, he's using his power to basically wipe out of existence 
all of these different heroes. And you see them, and I, you know, and they go through, and it was funny because when I was first reading, I was like, ah, part of me wanted to see more of an epic battle, like how Ali died. But then as I started thinking about it, this is where I started thinking why Ali was such a standout and that he's really the only one who didn't get died through this kind of epic power blast. You know, so I was like, I, I, that's where it got me thinking on the theory of they may be able to undo all of that other stuff, all of this stuff. But seeing just, you know, Black Adam just unleash on him. And I, this is a character that over the years, I've absolutely loved the way they do him. And you know, they play him and this, you know, how he's laid out, you know, because again, it's, you know, you've got that hero villain kind of vibe going on. He's the guardian of Kondok. Now he's a member of the Justice League and epic powerhouse. I God, I was just like outstanding when he says the Shazam, you know, and just the lightning cracks and he barely makes it out of like, oh, oh man. So the interesting part about this is, you know, so we now see the younger heroes and and the ones that some of them not so young in the sense that Wally's, you know, more of a veteran realizing the Justice League is done, you know, not even having a chance to process yet. We're going to have to see that. But Dark Crisis now. So let's talk about Dark Crisis and and. What are we thinking we're going to see? What do we want from this? Seven issues, so it's a big story. Not quite the 12 issues from before, but that's, you know, we're also not including the fact there's going to be tie-ins and things like that that are going on. Not sure how they're going to handle that. Other than we know, to your point, the Young Justice spinoff is going to be a thing. What do you expect we're going to see from this as far as characters go? And and at the end, what's the end game? Like, are who do you want to see come out of the woodworks who do you want to see brought back who do you want to see spotlighted is what what do you what do you see coming from dark crisis i don't know man because part of me i really think you know at least the first three issues maybe the first four issues it's just gonna be there's gonna be no mention no sign or you know possibility of the any of the characters who are dead coming back yeah it's going to be the next generation fighting the crisis you know, it's going to be, you know, John Kent. It's going to be, you know, uh, Jace, uh, Batman. I think we're going to have uh, well, former Aqualad, now Aquaman. You know, we're going to have, you know, um, just well, just looking at the one cover, you know, the, the different characters, you know, that are, you know, the next generation that are stepping up. That's going to be mm-hmm. the Justice League. And that's going to be the ones who are fighting this dark crisis. And, and I see Wally as, you know, being, you know, maybe one of the leaders on the team just because of seniority, just because of his time there. Adam, you know, you know, as long as he's breathing, he's fighting. So Adam's going to be, Jack Adam's going to be there. I, I would love to see, you know, um, they've got the Wonder Girl on the cover, but I would love to see Hippolyta. Well, we, we can't see Hippolyta. Sorry about that. Forget that comment. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, there, oh, man, it's, I'm, I'm seeing just the heroes cut band, uh, a classic crisis story, you know, for like the first three issues. And then issue, you know, four is when it starts to flip, you know, maybe that's, you know, the right. Uh, and again, the redemption of Dark Side. I really do think Dark Side is going to play a heavy part in the heroes winning this. You know, and it's not just because Dark Side, you know, is a good guy. It's because Dark Side one isn't a puppet, and so he's always going to be fighting the control. Did you say? Dark- did you say it's not just because Dark Side's a good guy? Yeah, he's not a good guy. No, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying okay. He's going to help the good. He's going to help you know, win. Yeah. Not because he is a good guy. Ah, he's going to help because that. he's dark side. Okay. You know, and he's not a puppet. And, you know, he recognizes that if the, you know, if the great darkness destroys everything, then he can't control the universe if it's all destroyed. So he's the one who's going to conquer the universe. So that's going to be dark side's motivation. So it's, it's going to be kind of like how they were thinking in justice league incarnate, where we got to let dark side win. And then, you know, then we got to deal with Dark Side. You know, I think we're going to kind of have that kind of moment where Dark Side has to work with the heroes. And I think when we get the Dark Side intervention is when we're going to start seeing, you know, Clark and Diana and Bruce and maybe some of the other characters start coming back. And that's when you're going to get the rally cry of 
the the young generation who's been fighting the old guard who's you know who initially went down and that that's going to be issue seven of this epic battle you know and it, this is how i'm seeing it in my head again i don't know they may completely swerve me and the old guard's dead and not bring them back at all and this is on the young the next generation which if they did that i'd be okay with it because again these characters have such a solid foundation for me. I know them already, and I'm cool with them already. Do you see this finally bringing back the JSA? Oh, that would be awesome. You know, especially if we get a nice rebirth of the multiverse after all this stuff is done. We really could have a uh, return of the JSA. And part of me, I'll be honest with you, part of me, I love the JSA on you know, Earth uh, Zero, but part of me wishes they went back to the original score where the JSA characters were, their, were the Justice League of their own Earth and even bring back the older Superman there and all that kind of just how they how that, you know, how that classic story was where it's like, you know, let's let's go back to that. You know, I, I love them on this Earth. So don't get me wrong. If they if they brought them back, I would be like, oh, man. But I think this is a really good chance they could maybe start doing stuff like yeah, yeah. I'd be very interested in seeing that. I think we're going to, with the whole bleed situation, I think we're going to see other Earths in the multiverse um, maybe not have such a, a good ending. Again, I, again, I'm saying I think they're going to bring them back, but I don't know. Yeah, I, re- I really don't know. It's the, And that's the neat thing about how they've laid this story down, that... You know, in the past, I'd be oh. like, oh, come on, I got to bring it back. He's Superman. No, they don't have to. I should, and, I should um, really clarify that. I'm not saying that in response to our talk about Justice League. It's more of thinking about the rest of the story, what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to see the current state of the multiverse, I should say, being heavily attacked, like what we've already seen. Oh, big time. Yeah. And we're going to get a full, if. Yeah, well, assuming well, we're assuming the heroes are going to win. I did air quotes around the word win sure. because this may be one of those crises where the heroes just survive. So when that happens, we're going to get some form of multiverse. Maybe I'm, I'm assuming we're still going to have a multiverse. We're not just going to have one Earth, but we may have the breakdown of the multiverse. Yeah. There may no longer be a connection and a crossover between the different you know, Earths. That may be the can- that may be the price of dark crisis that we're not going to be jumping Earths anymore. You're going to focus on Earth Zero, or you're going to focus on Earth blah blah blah, and that story is going to be just focused on that planet, that Earth. The multiverse may exist, but there may na- may be no connection between them. Ew. That may be broken down, and that ew is, you, what ew. I, oh, and I'm not saying I like it, but you think about it, just how much damage they're doing. Ew. Because the bleed is what's been the focus of the dark. You know, right now, the great darkness is destroying the bleed. And that's the interconnection between all the different worlds. You know, so I, I, I don't know. I think we could get some really cool, you know, stories out of that. You know, again, in just the dealing with this. And again, you know, Jace Batman is awesome. And I'd love to see how... The rest of the Bat family handles no Bruce and Gotham, you know, whether it's, you know, you know, you know, Dick Grayson stepping up and being Gotham's guardian, whether Damien says, no, I am the guardian of Gotham now. And we get a story where Damien is, you know, the guardian of Gotham. Come on. Don't tell me that would be an awesome story. That'd be amazing because the little monster is wonderful. But even just the full Bat family stepping up. You know, and again, John Kent, I'm loving, loving the stories they're telling with him. So I'm like, we've got some really cool stuff that's coming down the pipeline. And I'm I am very excited for Dark Crisis because there's so many different ways this story can go. The big the big idea is that the Trinity is gone and they're not coming back. But will they or won't they? You know, what's going to happen? Who will, will a new Justice League? Will they form this new Justice League? Will they rise up to defeat the dark crisis or is it not going to be something you can defeat? You can just subside it for a little while. You can buy yourself some time. You know, it's, there's so many things they can do on this, man. I'm I'm pumped. Yeah. I'm in the same boat on this one. I I really am excited. Speculation is purely like, where are they going to go with this? And and what does it look like? 
Uh, I can't wait to see more. That's really important when you do a prelude like this. You've got to give people enough reason to be excited and interested in what comes next. They're doing a really, really, really good job with this. I, I, Justice League Incarnate was another surprise. Like, I didn't realize it was going to lead into this the way that it did. I knew I knew from articles that this was meant to be leading into Dark Crisis. I didn't realize it was going to lead into 75, which obviously leads into Dark Crisis. Um, I really have liked how they've revealed information uh, without revealing too much, which is crazy when you've got a title of the book, Death of Justice League. But they've done a really good job of letting the story be told in the pages and and teasing, you know, and because you got to hook people in who are yeah. lapsed readers. When you do a title like The Death of Justice League, you don't have to do it with those of us that have been reading Justice League. You got to do it for the people that haven't because they've got to come in and go, all right, I'll pick up the same people that picked up Superman 75. Not how many people picked up that book and were not reading Superman at the time. Tons. So you're hoping for the same thing with this. I wonder nowadays you when know, you do that, if you get a speculator market of people that are like, I've got to pick up Justice League 75 because it'll be worth something. And I, I just am curious about that. I'm not saying that there aren't. There's nothing, you know, cra- I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, be controversial in that question. I'm more looking at it going, is that market still a thing? Like, do are there certain issues where people do who are casual like they aren't readers like you and me come in and like start buying like 10 copies of issue 75 because they think it's going to be worth something i'm not saying it won't be i'm just i'm more wondering is that a thing if i'm making any sense i I, i'll be honest with you i you know i've got when uh Justice League 75, because it's, you know, when it came out, I bought the Justice League 75, and I got all the variant covers as well. But yeah. when I buy, I get the variant covers, so I have all those. Yeah. And, you know, and with Dark Crisis, I'm picking up all the variant covers on that just because I, I do that with, you know, with some of these big events. So, I do, too. I like that. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of neat, you know. And, but I, I don't think, I, again, I'm saying I don't think so, but I'm not 100% certain on it. Because, you know, you think back to, you know, when back in, you know, when we were in college and the death of Superman came out, I had a hard time finding death of Superman. Yep. You know, because, first printing, especially first printing. Oh, God. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I eventually did find my first printing that I never unsealed. Then I had the, the first printing that I did unseal and read. So, and I still have, you know, my unsealed uh, death of Superman, you know, but, you know, I. I don't know if people are still doing that, you know, with the comic books nowadays, you know, and I'm not saying you know, and I'm to be clear, I don't want to pretend I'm saying that they're not. I I've got to admit the way that I approach it now is such that I don't know. So I'm just wondering and I'm hoping here's what I'm hoping for that for comic shops. It's good for comic yeah. shops, right? Because we're going to get them comic shops. So I hope there is that market of people that are like hearing about this and they're going in and grabbing it. Because that's good for a comic shop. It's a good sales day when you got a bunch of people coming in and grabbing a book. Because usually people grow, come in and they grab something else. You know what I mean? So it's it's a good payday for comic shops at a time where it's been pretty stinky for them with the COVID nonsense. Yes. So I'm really glad you know that these type of events are happening. I hope they're generating some kind of buzz that's helping out comic shops. Uh, because they certainly deserve it after what what they've had to weather. And I'm, I applaud any comic shop that managed to survive the storm and is finding a way to make it work. So um, this is, it, it's an interesting time. He is called Hawkman. His gauntlets possess awesome powers. I would like to remind everyone about our show voicemail line. It's one 388 Four four three four or Dr. Norge on Skype. We love having you part of our show. RagingBullets at gmail.com is our email address. You prefer to contact us that way. RagingBullets.com is our show website. It feeds into Twitter and it feeds into our Facebook fan page. We are proud to be part of an amazing Facebook group community. And I want to thank everyone who posts there and, and has the conversations going on about recent news and events going on in and out of D.C. Uh, I have mentioned repeatedly that I go there first for my news. And I really do because people are kind enough to post things that they're like, Hey, the guys, this is of interest. 
And uh, so thank you very much for everyone who does that and the safe conversation that goes on there. The About Us section of our show website is where you can find out how to contact us through social media and gaming platforms because we certainly want to connect with you. We are sponsored, as always, by DCB Service and InStockTrades.com. Jim, what's going on over at DCBService.com? We have the DC Pride 2022 uh, 20 one-shot, uh, 40% off, only $5.99, and the DC Pride Tim Drake Special, 40% off, only $3.59. Thank you, DCBS. Over at InStockTrades.com, you can take a look in the new releases for Batman Fear State Saga. $49.99 regularly, 42% off, only $28.99. Batman the Detective, this miniseries is super awesome. This hardcover is $24.99 regularly, 42% off, only $14.49. Thank you, DCB Service and InStockTrades.com for continuing to support our show. Our next episode, we're going to be back with The Joker as planned and... Flashpoint Beyond. We will see you next week. Bye. All right, you guys. Are you ready to sing your song? I can, we are. Yeah, let's sing it now. Okay, this should be fun. Now get ready for your cue. Okay, Sean? Okay. Okay, Jim? Jim? Jim! Okay. Raging bullets time is here. We talk about what we Okay, fellas, get ready. That was very good, Sean. Naturally. Uh, Jim, you're a little flat there, so be careful. Jim. Jim. Jim! Excellent job, guys. Let's sing it again. Yeah, let's sing it again. No, no, that's enough. Let's not push it. Push it? What is that? Yeah, what are you talking about? No, I don't. I didn't mean to buy that. I think you're going to get my song. 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 I think you're going to get my song.